Okay, good that's, evening. That's the most current. Yeah. Good evening. Um, but everyone needs so seeing that the appointed time has arrived Asked. and that the planning board has formed, the chair opens up the meeting of the Mashpee Planning Board, Wednesday, October 19th, being held here in the Wakoyat Meeting Room, Mashpee Town Hall, 16 Great Neck Road North, Mashpee, Massachusetts. The time is 7 o'clock. We're being recorded, photographed, and broadcast live on local channel 18, streamed live on Mashpee, Website, Town of Mashpee website, https colon slash slash www.mashbma.gov slash channel dash 18. I welcome everybody here today. Um, we do have a public hearing at 710, and I'll go through that a little procedure a little bit um, as we get closer to that time. But right now, I invite everyone to rise and recite with me to the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, <clears throat> first order of business is approval of minutes from our meeting on September 7th, 2022. Does anybody have any comments? Seeing none, I'd take a motion to accept the minutes as presented. So be. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed or abstaining? Okay, thank you. All right, so we have about five minutes to our uh, public hearing at 710. Do Mary, you want sorry, quick point of order. The agenda reads September 7th, and I'd like to apologize that the meeting minutes were dated September 21st. We've already approved the September 7th meeting minutes. All right, let's just put the 21st on the um, agenda. Next agenda. Okay, the next agenda. Okay. Do you want to go through that new item, the new business? Yes, I do. I don't think I see anyone here. Are you, sir, are you here for the Tudor Terrace public hearing by any chance? No. Okay. Um, so no one's in the crowd for the Tudor Terrace subdivision. Uh, I found when we were getting ready to prepare your packets for this meeting, a procedural defect in the public hearing notifications for this particular application. Uh, it was not mailed to the adjacent town planning boards, which is a requirement pursuant to uh, the Massachusetts Zoning Act, and so I would ask the board to re-vote to set the public hearing dates for the upcoming Wednesday, November 2nd meeting at 7.15 and 7.20, I believe. Mary, I gave you the public hearing notices in front of you there. Um, oh. But we were able to uh, prepare an adequate and comprehensive um, notice in, in consideration and consistency with the Zoning Act. Okay, so I'd accept a motion to set the public hearing time for um, the application made by Pleasant Wood Homes LLC to modify a special permit approved in October 6, 1989 um, to Wednesday, November 2nd at 7, uh, 715 at the events room at Mashpee Public Library. So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed or abstaining? Then there's a, then, okay. And then I'd accept a motion to schedule a public hearing for Wednesday, November 2nd, 2022 at 710 in the events room at the Mashpee Public Library to consider an application made by Pleasant Wood Homes LLC for the approval of a modification to Spring Hill, sorry, Spring Hill West Definitive Subdivision Plan of the Land. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed or abstaining? Thank you. And just remind us why we're, we're meeting at the library. Uh, early voting, so, or is it early voting? Yeah, early voting will be in this room. Oh, okay. Uh, so it's closed for public meetings for the week. Okay.
All right, so um, we can skip down to um, old business. We'll, we'll skip the local comprehensive plan because those will be longer topics. But um, affordable housing and workforce housing coordination with the um, Affordable Housing Committee and Community Preservation Program. Do you want to talk a little bit about um, your, your presentation to the um, Housing Committee from yesterday? Sure. Um, and I, I placed this on Town Planner Report, too, so I'm happy to discuss it with you. I, I spoke with the Affordable Housing Committee uh, last night. They had asked me to, uh, the chair had asked me about a month ago to begin thinking about um, launching the process for the housing production plan. Um, and as we're kind of nearing the tail end of the local comprehensive planning process, or at least the community engagement, because we'll obviously have some, some writing to do and, and editing to do in, in the near future, um, we have to, we would like to begin the procurement process for obtaining our consultant to assist with housing production plan update. So they, they wanted a little bit of information relative to timelines um, and a little bit about, you know, where where I'm you know, thinking about um, taking this update and we want to begin also thinking about uh, you know, the scope and scale of the community engagement we want to do for the housing production plan. Um, so I presented them a, a really rough uh, timeline, but essentially um, drafting the request for uh, quote uh, for this will be relatively simple. We anticipate, uh, excuse me, the CPC has authorized, CPC has awarded us $50,000. The town meetings affirmed that award for this update, so we'll need to issue the RFQ to procure the consultant for up to no, to, up to an amount not to exceed $50,000. Um, I anticipate that process from issuing, you know, writing the RFP and issuing it would be about 30 days. Um, shortly thereafter, we would issue an award and execute a contract, hopefully within a month thereafter. Um, and then, you know, if we were to do this now, um, that's two months time, we're into December, um, early January 2023, we would be in a position to begin outlining the process with our consultant, uh, conducting literature review, um, and begin contemplating how much community engagement um, we think is uh, consistent with best practice and prudent in consideration of the contract award. Um, and I, one thing I wanted to do for the Affordable Housing Committee as well is uh, explain to them a little bit how I think it might be prudent to deviate from the existing format of the housing production plan by uh, creating a mechanism within the production plan itself to create some accountability and mechanisms for mechanisms for accountability for the town to bring to fruition um, these sites we've identified as ideal for affordable housing. So. Good taking that pipeline and putting it into an implementable plan that we can hold departments and boards to account on so we have a regular flow of work once we, now that we've identified those sites. Um, and so through that process, I anticipate that, you know, that would take around six months to, you know, get through engagement and, and prepare a draft of that plan, whereas we would then, we, myself, maybe a, a working group, but that's something to be discussed, along with the consultants, would prepare a draft for review by the Affordable Housing Committee, where we would seek review, comment, edits, uh, you name it, uh, incorporate those comments into the draft, uh, and ask them to send it to the planning board for the same review and comment, um, where once you reach a point of comfort with that document, you would adopt it and send it to the select board. And once the select board uh, accepts it, they would send it to the Department of Housing and Community Development in Boston for um, certification. Um, I would say that if we were to start today, that would, this would be looking like a slightly more than one year long process. So we'd probably be launching January 2023 and getting into December of 2023 or early 2024. So I'm going to begin working on the procurement-related documents uh, probably next week. And um, so I gave you some language to use. Yes, you did. And that's the minimum uh, requirements of a housing production plan. The state has some regulations on how to do that. But you can always uh, go beyond that. Great. 
So there's, um, there's housing production plans for towns that, um, you know, the state, when they're talking about that kind of housing, they're talking about housing that goes on that subsidized housing inventory, right. that 10% goal. But there's other housing that communities um, uh, create, like workforce housing that goes above certain um, income requirements that the subsidized housing inventory has. So they don't go on our, they don't count to our 10%, but they still serve our community. Mm. So, um, yeah, so you could, th that's the minimum requirement, and then there's other types of housing. Yes. So I think that, um, I think that would be good if our HPP has, you know, a little bit of that too. Certainly. Um, also, um, I spoke to the housing committee, it was, the meeting was last night, right? And um, under public comment, and I asked them to put on their next agenda um, the item of local preference at the new affordable housing being built at 950 um, Falmouth Road. There's 40 units there. So Evan, you thought that there was local preference? Um, I'm very confident that there is, but I, yeah. just, I still need to confirm that for you. Um, but um, at, the, at the tribal council, the joint tribal council select board meeting, Carlton Hendricks um, asked for a preference for tribal citizens. So I asked the housing um, committee to consider that on their next agenda to, to write a letter of support for local preference. A local preference would apply to 70% of those units, which is 28 units. And um, you, it, there could be preference units and they could, hopefully the state or the, the subsidizing agency for this chapter 40B would allow a mix of preferences, which would be like local preference, which we normally have, plus some units set aside for veterans, plus some units set aside for tribal citizens. So I'm hoping that the housing uh, committee gets a letter for that, and then maybe we can take it to the select board and get their stamp of approval too. Um, and can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. Workforce housing, mm. does that count? To the 10% or no? Depends what, um, so like yeah, that. mass housing or mass housing partnership, they 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 say that work, their workforce housing program serves housing houses, households that earn 65% of the area median income to 120% of the area median income. Units that get on the subsidized housing inventory have to be at 80% or lower. So there's some overlap. Um, but, you know, that 80% is a rule that staff makes up, <laughs> up at the state house. Same as the 10%. You know, we know that the need far exceeds you know, the 10%. So it's, it's, it's interesting. If, if the state is funding workforce housing, then um, that should go on the inventory. But um, so, so yes and no. Okay. It's, there's a little bit of an overlap. I like it to count the whole thing. Yeah. And the programs are relatively new when it comes to the, up to the 150% average median income yeah. Those programs. are new. So. That's new that the state is, is looking to subsidize housing almost like moderate income rather than low, yeah. very low, extremely low. So. That's the thing you need to. Okay, so. Um, Let's go to our uh, public hearing. So seeing that the appointed time has arrived, the chair opens up the 710 public hearing. The applicant is Marcelo Mag Malegni, Forest Road, LLC. The location is 532 Main Street Map, Assessor Map 26, Block 6. The applicant requests consideration for approval of a nine lot definitive subdivision plan of land consisting of approximately 18.05 acres located on Main Street, Route 130, between Nicoletta's Way and Echo Road. And is there a public hearing notice in here I have to read? Um, I don't have the public hearing notice for this one. Oh, we, we This is a continued hearing, yes. Okay. So I just want to go through um, kind of like the process. So uh, typically what I do is I um, recognize the applicant. Improve and all around memory. Okay. That's okay. So um, could have been something else. <laughs> 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 I 
But anyways, you have to be healthy. Guys. That's right. <laughs> be healthy. Be strong. So I'm going to start with the project proponent. Have them uh, present. Uh, the plan, it, 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 the uh, project, it was a while ago since you first presented. So do you mind kind of starting from scratch as a refresher? Is that good? And yeah. then um, usually what I do is I go around the board, ask for questions, um, give some time to the town planner um, to ask some questions, and then open it up to the public. There's some written correspondence in here. Um, I'll go over that, and then we'll take it from there. So at this point, I'll recognize Great. the project proponent. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, Attorney Christopher Corain representing the applicant. Um, as the uh, Madam Chair had uh, read into the record, uh, we are seeking approval of a, a nine-lot definitive subdivision on 532 Main Street. Uh, this is located, if I remember correctly, uh, in both the C2 and the I1. I think the front lots are in the C2, C3, C3 and the remaining lots are in the I1, uh, the industrial zone. I think all of it's in the industrial, uh, the light industrial overlay district. Um, I wasn't necessarily prepared to give a, a, a big overview of the project only because at our last hearing um, I had reported back to the board that uh, we were going to be seeking uh, the approval of the definitive subdivision plan. Um, we were not able to come to an agreement with the owners of Nicoletta's way. Uh, the board had discussed at that time um, the um, uh, the prospect of a, of a traffic, to, traffic impact study. Mm -hmm. And the traffic impact study, um, we, the, Evan was gonna send out quotes uh, to uh, submit to the board and submit to the applicant. I believe two quotes have come in. I think there's one more quote that's outstanding um, that they're still waiting to get. So, um, you know, obviously it's in the board's discretion whether or not they want the traffic in impact study to be done by uh, the outside con consultant. Um, so, you know, again, if the board were inclined to uh, vote to uh, have a traffic impact study, you know, that may affect the ultimate plan that goes before this board uh, for approval. Uh, my understanding is that it may take four to six weeks uh, if the board was inclined to um, uh, you know, have that traffic impact study done. Uh, so, you know, at the end of the day today, you know, if that's voted, uh, if that motion passes, that, you know, we'd be looking for a continuance, you know, probably till your December, your December, uh, December meeting. Um, so I don't know if there's any additional information. The only other thing, uh, two things. One is uh, there's one technical logistical question as the board knows, um, there was an old Cod Commission decision. Um, a prior owner had cut down some trees on the lot many, many years ago. There was a uh, decision by the Cape Cod Commission which requires the owner of the property to convey, I believe, four acres to the Conservation Commission. There is a technical question of whether that needs to be done before the board can approve a subdivision or whether or not we can propose it as part of any approval process. So I just need clarification from the conservation, uh, from the Cape Cod Commission on, on that technical issue. My, my preference would be if the board was inclined to approve the project, then I can reference the subdivision plan and the lot that's approved in the deed conveying the conservation, in the deed conveying it to the Conservation Commission. So that's how I would like to have it done as opposed to, you know, maybe having to come back on a different type of plan or having it surveyed independently. So that would be my preference, and I'm hoping that the Cape Cod Commission uh, would agree to allow that to uh, go that way. But I think from the board's perspective, it will be done. So there is a requirement that it be done, and it will be done as part of the application. Um, I had a meeting with Evan late today. He had asked, asked me um, to do some research on when the lot was created and who created it. I haven't had a chance to look into that, but I will have that information uh, well before the next meeting. So, and it's certainly if there's any other information that the board requires, I will make sure that that's provided uh, prior to the next year, next meeting. So, you're, you're talking about how it's blocked? I'm sorry? The, the property's not on yours, it's on the Echo Road? No, right it's there. it's not on any road, it's just on off of Main Street right now. Yeah, that's what I mean, it's, it's on, but it's, that's how you get to it on Echo Road. No, there's no access to it from Echo Road. It's behind that, how it's blocked, right? Stonewood products. No, it's in between 
Echo Road and Nicoletta's Way. Yeah. So, Why don't you come up and, and show them the, on the plan? Use the microphone, please. You'll grab the mic. Oh. So, no, this is the proposed road, and these are the lots. So, oh, are you talking about the lots that would go to the Cape Cod Commission? Yeah. Oh, they'd be back here. So they'd be kind of towards the back, closest to a Schumann Road. That's residential. Uh, yes. Isn't it? It is. And when you first stated, you said this is all commercial, but it's not. It's yeah, this. Right. Correct. I apologize. Yes. So I think I think Mike needs a visit too. <laughs> So, oh, I think I'm comfortable with a lot to four acres, or it's in the back someplace, so that's not good. Yeah, gonna, right? I'm not. Correct. Okay. And it seems to me that's kind of a done deal. So we, we shouldn't make it any more difficult, I wouldn't think. Well, let's, let's <laughs> we'll go around. Not. We'll go around. I wasn't sure um, what I was on the side of that side. So, so. Right. <laughs> so Dennis went first. Dennis, anything else? So these residential lot down here, you get a thump of shoe with road. The residential lots, you eventually, if you want to put houses on there, you have access on a Schumann Road. No, you can't. You couldn't have access on a Schumann Road because the or the decision from the commission is going to require that that portion of that of the lot be restricted as open space and conveyed to the conservation commission. Right. So right. thereafter, there would be no access to a Schumann Road. I was just thinking it'd be a nice place to put a apartment house. We need affordable we, houses. We discussed that before we were aware of. That's the, why I'm asking the decision this. and the need to convey. That's why I'm asking this question because I'm looking to see where we can start putting affordable housing. Yes. And stuff. All right. Thank you. Anything else, Dennis? Nope. I'm going to go to John. I'm good. Oh, good. Yep. Um, Michael. I just my only comment was with regard to the suggestion that not to go back and do it all over. The four acres have already been decided. They're going to be put aside, and you make it part of the agreement. So. That would seem fine to me. That's right. I guess that wasn't a question, more like a comment. Right. Yes, that is oh. a comment. <laughs> um, I'm going to go to Karen. Um, I'm looking at the one, the the uh, page of the plan that says best management practices. You know, it's got a number three. And it says construction entrance, and it looks like just the construction entrance is going onto Main Street. That's like a dirt road there that you. Want to create? Right. They. I would. Uh, I'm not the engineer, but my assumption is is that yes, they'd have to create some sort of entrance to gain access to the back mm -hmm. to create the uh, the subdivision road. So that would be that uh, is Lemar Drive. Yes, that's the proposed road. Okay. Yeah. Which which plan are you I'm, looking I'm, at? I'm, what I'm sheet? I'm a little confused about this. Fine. Maybe you can help me. Um, okay. It's fine. Let's see. Wait, where's the page that you get lists Nicoletta? I understand this this place is landlocked. Am I right on that? No. It has it has fronted John Root. No, I see, 30, but right? there's there's the only way to get out is Nicoletta. If you no. could. If you could. If you could. If you could, which we don't have any agreement on that. Correct. No, no so, um so we need well, to. What are you proposing? Are you proposing a curb cut? Is that what you're? Correct. We, we we need to build a new road, in between where the Nicoletta's Way properties are and the Echo Road properties are, and that's what that's what's shown on that plan. So there would be a new road created. It's a cul-de-sac road um, that would be called, I think, Leemore Drive and or Leemore Road. Would this be the road that, that you're using as a construction access? Yes, I think that'd be the only access. Okay, well, I drive down there all the time, and I think, well, maybe I'm jumping ahead, Mary, but we, I think we should have a traffic study. Um, I'm approving the subdivision, but the question really is, do we want to get into that now, the curb cut? I, I, you have the project proponent here. Yeah. There's no question but you I can't, can't ask. ask right now, right? That's I mean, true. That, okay. that's why they're here. Okay. And if they're not comfortable answering it, they'll let us know. Yes. Okay. Well, I read the letters from the abutters, of course, and you get a permit from public DP DPW. Or maybe even the, I don't know if it's a you state get road. The approval of yeah. the subdivision, is that right? Yes, yes, we'd have to see. Yeah, there'd be no reason to get a curb cut if the board I mean, didn't approve it. Yeah, because we don't know if you'll get it. 
Now, the, the thing is that I know that area. I, I think, and maybe you can remind me, in plan review, is the Ganjami uh, um, contractor base, is that in plan review right now, or is that here? It's, no, that, that's a Zoning Board of Appeals uh, project that's been approved. That is on Echo Road. Okay, so you've got that. That's going to be truck traffic and, you know. No, that, uh, that building is only warehouse. It's only storage. Oh, okay, all right, so very little traffic yeah, there. Very little traffic from the that. The solar array place is going to be virtually no traffic. Right. Although I'm not involved in that project, so I guess I No, I know, but I'm just looking at the... <laughs> right. I, I come down there, and when you wind, wind around a corner at some point, it's like, better slow down, because right. these lumbering trucks are coming out from everywhere. Right. Stonewood, um, it's a the coffee though. place. Yeah, I mean, Do that's... You know, that's, I mean, those three roads, uh, you know, Evergreen, Echo, Nicoletta's are all commercial and industrial zone yeah. uh, areas. So, you know, you have a variety of businesses, whether they're landscape businesses, whether it's Cape Cod Coffee, you know, whether they're storage or warehouse, you know, um, you know, there's a, you know, the new Best Buy beverage is going in there uh, off of Evergreen. So, I mean, it's just a variety of, you know, um, of uses there. There are no uses proposed at this time um, for this project. We're just simply looking for the lots in the subdivision to be approved. Um, you know, these lots are likely to be sold at some point, and then whoever buys those lots would propose a use. Uh, most of the, I think, generally every use in those districts has to go before the Zoning Board of Appeals. So there's no, there's, I think there's very little buy right uses in this area. You can't sell it ultimately, unless you have a way to egress and ingress. Oh, absolutely, correct. So, now, when it says if 30 or more vehicle trips a day, uh, are they talking about 30 trips from your business, your, your land, or 30 trips in that general area, your land? I'm not sure. Where, where's the 30 trips did coming I from? I see that? That's the curb cut policy, the, curb the Slugman's cut curb policy. cut policy. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I, I read in there that, um, you know, this may be beyond the purview of the DPW director that maybe we want, or you should have a technical consultant. Would that be the traffic study? Yes, it would. Okay. Um, so I guess I, those are my questions because I do consider that place somewhat dangerous, having driven there many, many times myself. And um, if you're really unfamiliar with that area, you know, you're chugging along and all of a sudden you see one of those trucks come out and it's like... Right. Okay. Understood. I got a quick... Yes, yeah. Dennis, go right ahead. Look at this? Yes, and the report should be in your packet. Yeah, all right. You did a write up. But I like... So he's saying that the curb coming out to 130, the radius is fine? Um, I think he made a comment relative to the turning radii at right the up. intersection and I, I think he did. actually... Uh, Revisions were made pursuant to Ed's comments already. Right. So okay. those change. Those Ed is satisfied with the engineering of the plan. Yeah. Right. Can you get us an updated? I can. Yeah. I can. I mean, um, I, nothing's changed in the plan as of yet. Right. Um, but I can certainly have Ed affirm that his comments haven't changed. Okay. I wish he was here. Though. Yeah. Let's have him here at the next time. Yeah. Ed's in Florida right now. That's oh. the only reason he's not here. But he is uh, aware. Okay. Oh, and the fire department gave you an okay with the radius in the back for the truck turn around? As far as I know, no. yes. Well, you, you have to get a report from it, right? right? Can we get something in I writing? I can have the chief uh, submit something in writing, but they did review this plan as well, yeah. as yeah. well as the, the Board of Health. Okay. You guys ready for me? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can I have Oh, yeah, Rob. Sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead right ahead. All right. Last time you were here and we were talking about putting in the new road um, and there was discussion with a, uh, an intersecting road, Sturgis Road, and a sidewalk that was uh, terminating or, or in that general area. Will the traffic impact study, uh, other than automobile traffic, will that uh, touch base on the uh, pedestrian traffic as well as the intersection of Sturgis Road traffic. I would defer to town planner. I, I wrote the scope and it would. <clears throat> okay. It would. It's looking at all safety concerns. Good. And I, I do have the scope and some of the quotes here that I, I printed this for you if oh. you want to take it. <laughs> sure, thank you. And then um, <clears throat> share that with um, 
Mr. Malegny. You good? Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, I asked Evan um, earlier today about, um, the, I asked if the plan had been submitted to the Board of Health. He told me it was during the preliminary right. review. And that um, for the report from the Board of Health. Did I give that to you? And was it, what was the conclusion from the um, Board of Health? The plan was submitted both for the preliminary as well as definitive. Okay. The preliminary was an approval that I have in my email, it's sitting there, um, that I need to forward to the board. The definitive was also approved with a caveat. The Board of Health at the time was not unable to meet in quorum. So the, bo the Board of Health was not able to make a recommendation. The recommendation came from the health agent. Now our rules and regulations require timely filing with the Board of Health and a, a failure to respond constitutes an approval, but we do have the comments and approval from the health agent himself, but not the body of the Board of Health. But it was filed with the board in a timely fashion. Okay. Both for the preliminary and definitive. All right. Yeah. And then, um, right, so I'd, and I'd like Ed Pesci's um, uh, comment to, you know, say that it, this design meets all design standards and road construction standards okay. in our rules and regulations governing the subdivision of land. Understood. Just get that um, final. All right. So regarding the Cape Cod uh, Commission decision, I do want to see a certificate of compliance from them um, prior to us voting on approval of this plan. Okay. I don't, I'm, I'm struggling. This is why I'm struggling. It's not a special permit where we can put a condition on it. It's, uh, and it's my understanding that approval of a definitive subdivision cannot be conditioned. Right. It's like, it's like it, 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 it. Yes or no. It, it complies with your rules or regulations or it doesn't. Right. And you can't have a provisional condition. Right. What I may suggest, and again, I'll talk to the Cape Cod Commission. What I'm hoping is maybe they can give a, a conditional approval or conditional certificate of compliance. As I say, it, it may require, to do it the way you're suggesting, may require two separate plans coming before the board, but I'll, I'll work that out with the Cape Cod Commission. For <clears> me, <throat> I want to see that land Correct. restricted conservation right. yeah. before I vote yes for this. Okay. Well, it, it, it won't even be restricted. It'll actually be deeded to the Conservation Commission. They'll own great. it. Right. Deeded. Yes. That, that's what I want to see. Okay. That being said, <laughs> you're going you're gonna to confirm for us when the lot was created and how. Yes. Right? Um, and then um, before we talk about the traffic study, I think we should hear from the public. Does that sound good? Um, so, is there anybody here from the public that would like to comment? So come up and uh, uh, give your name and address and we will hear you. Hello, thank you. Arden Russell, Sturgis Lane. I am an abutter to this proposal. Um, as the portion of the property with access onto Main Street is C3, C3 district, um, the proposed subdivision is subject to, it appears to be subject to 17440, access ways to non-residential districts. Section 17440 states that there shall be, shall be required a minimum separation of 200 feet between the center line of any access way onto, I'll shorten this to Route 130, and any other access way or to the sideline of any street intersecting said said roadways. The 532 Main Street subdivision proposal clearly does not meet this requirement. There are two access ways significantly less than 200 feet from the road proposed to this subdivision, both Sturgis Lane and Baker's Road. Baker's Road is a road and an ancient way. This provision is in the zoning for safety reasons. Less than 200 feet of separation between major intersections is not safe. As I try to leave Sturgis Lane now, I need to deal with a significant amount of traffic to the south from Nicoletta's. Mafi landscaping alone creates hundreds of trips per day. And now, possibly, a significant amount of traffic directly to my north, much less than 200 feet away with this proposed road. How are we ever going to get out? 
Both of these intersections are in very close proximity to Sturgis Lane and Bakers Road. There is also currently a significant amount of traffic from Echo Road, as we mentioned, and now from Evergreen, which isn't even completely developed yet, both in close proximity. Cape Cod Coffee, if you've ever driven past there, hundreds of cars, the dispensary, and many, many other additional indus industrial businesses. As this, subdivision, as this proposed subdivision at 532 Main Street does not comply with zoning section 17440, and for the safety of the community, I urge the planning board not to grant approval of this subdivision road. Thank you. Thank you. So in that traffic study, scope of services, is, is it in there, the um, suggestions on how to proceed? What do you to mean? make things safer or? It's to assess the impact of the actual proposal. So um, okay. in consideration of the predominant uses of the district and future build out projections um, at certain peak hour trips, which is generally like was it seven to nine in the morning during the week and six to eight in the evenings or something like that. Um, for 96, it'll, it'll propose a 96 hour traffic count, constant traffic count, um, and review the intersections of Evergreen Circle, Sturgis, Nicoletta's, and Echo Road in addition to the proposed new facility. Um, and co draw conclusions about. Um, okay. There's a, in the memo that I wrote to you months ago, um, I highlighted the areas of concern in the comprehensive plan um, to develop that scope. Um, it's, it essentially encourages boards not to make render any approvals for new roadway facilities if certain conditions may exist. Um, so that's how I drafted the scope um, because you know we want to ensure that not only is something consistent with the zoning bylaw but it's also consistent with the with the comprehensive plan. Um, certainly the updated one when we are done. Um, but I have received, I want to say four quotes thus far, and I'm anticipating one additional uh, quote for the services. Okay. Um, is there anybody else here from the public that would like to make a comment? Okay. Um, so I'm just going to go over the, um, the uh, written comments we've received to date. Um, the first one is Janet Tixara. To the planning board members, I'm against the curb cut on 520, uh, 5, it's 532, right? It is 532. Okay. Yeah. On 532 Main Street for uh, this reason, it's within 150 feet of the existing intersection with Nicoletta Way. It's very close proximity to many residential driveways. The proposed road will exit onto the exact location where the bike path begins on the south side of Route 130, have you ever tried to cross 130 at this location? Impossible. I have lived at 567 Main Street for at least 49 years. I have seen how much traffic has become. become. Okay. The bike path is used with a lot of children on bikes, people walking, their dogs, runners. If you put a curb cut there, it will be dangerous to everyone that uses the bike path. Please don't okay the curb cut. That was Janet Texera. Okay. The next one um, is from Donna McCurrish at 22 Sturgis Lane, Michael Shelton at 10 Sturgis Lane, and Gennady Konakov at 16 Sturgis Lane. And this is addressed to the planning board. We understand that there is a proposal to build a new road at or near 532 Main Street with a possible curb cut onto Route 130 for the purpose of creating nine commercial and industrial lots. We are concerned about the proximity of this proposed road to the two intersections that are already get very busy, Nicoletta's Way and Echo Road. We are very concerned for the safety of walkers, joggers, bicycle riders who have to cross Route 130 near there in order to continue on the bike path. With extra vehicles entering and exiting Route 130, as this project would create, the likelihood of accidents would increase. We live on Sturgis Lane, and we are very grateful for the bike path. We use it regularly along with many others who use it for exercise and access to Heritage Park, the dog park, etc. It is already challenging to cross Route 130 at Sturgis Lane, Bakers Road, with the current amount of vehicle traffic there. What would happen to the crosswalk that is currently there? Would the bike path be extended on one side of Route 28? Which side? 
We also understand the proposed parcel of land requested for development is within the Mashpee National Wildlife Refuge, designated as a significant natural resource area and is important habitat for wildlife and is also potential future water supply area. Residents of our abutting neighborhood in the town needs answers and more information about all of this. There seems to be many reasons not to build a road and subdivision in this area. Please, for safety reasons, do not give approval to the DPW to make this curb cut. It would be a great loss to our neighborhood in particular and the many other neighbors and individual homeowners along the bike path from Pickerel Cove to Stratford Pond. Okay. Okay. Um, from Jonathan Small at 40 Sturgis. Dear, and this is dated May 4th, 2022. Dear Mashpee Planning Board, I'm writing to you with significant concerns about the proposal to build a new road with a curb cut on Route 130 to service nine lots to be developed at 532 Main Street. There are many complex safety and environmental access issues to consider with this proposal among them. The proximity of the proposed curb cut to the existing intersection with Nicoletta's Way within 150 feet. Why do we need an addition, uh, why do we need to build a completely new road when there are parties when the party should, could find a way to use Nicoletta's way instead. What are the implications for the existing crosswalk and bike path, sidewalk? Uh, this would need to be relocated to where? Um, there would be too many intersections in close proximity to one another on the busy road near the playground. This would become an extremely busy intersection, creating general safety concerns about confluence of traffic flow and on the road and bike path and significantly increased traffic on Route 130 and around the neighborhood. As an abutter to this pro property, I strongly urge the board to consider all of these issues and, uh, and the concerns expressed by neighbors before proceeding with this proposal. Then on 1017, 2022, Jonathan Small again from 40 Sturgis uh, Lane. It's the same letter. It's the same letter. So good for him putting it in twice so that we wouldn't lose it. Okay. Then we have uh, letters from Arden Russell. Would you like to summarize these for us? Oh, she just did. They already did that. Okay. So are you fine with me I mean, not reading them out loud? Absolutely. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, so I just want to ask Evan a question about the bike path and the sidewalks. Mm. Who owns those? The town? The town. There's an easement over the property for public use and access. So um, have we been in touch, have you been in touch with any department about what would happen to those? We have, I've discussed it with the director of public works, but don't have, a, don't have clarity regarding what the, would happen uh, at that facility. Uh, it's certainly something we would need to discuss and get comment on. So do you think, I, I would like to send Catherine Laurent a quick memo from the planning board yeah. asking her to answer that question for us or ask her what resources she needs yeah. to answer those questions. Yeah. Very good. Is that, is that okay with everybody? Yeah. Can yeah. I have a motion? That's so be. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Will you draft something up? I will. Okay. That's great. So get that going. Um, I, I do have to say that I talked to Evan today and he had a very out of the box idea about taking the road. Oh, I did. Look at him, you have already heard it. So do you, do you wanna, are you comfortable talking about it? Is there any? Oh, I've, I've, I alluded to this in the memo I wrote to you a number and of months ago. And that memo is dated May. Oh gosh, All right. let me look at it, it's in, it's in your packet. Did I ask you to go over that memo or any, did I ask you to go over all of this with us? I think we did uh, along. That was at, a long time ago. At the ago, beginning so of already. this. We did back in um, May-ish. Let me find it. I know, I know the zoning 174.40. I think one thing we need clarity on. Um, is? Is uh, when we define 
distance between the sideline of any road, does that mean roads on the same side of the street or both sides of the street? The engineers for the applicant are interpreting that as um, the same side of the street, and thus on the plan they show as provided 253.3 feet between the sidelines of the road and thus would be um, compliant with the zoning. Mm -hmm. We certainly need clarity. It's something I've asked, uh, I've included in the scope for the traffic study uh, is. I think we should ask town council. It, that's it, and what we can do that as well. I think I want it to go to town council. I can submit that question to council. Is that good with everybody? Yeah. Because my interpretation is it's all roads. It doesn't say roads on one side of the street. I mean, a bylaw would be written like that. So, um, so oh, sections 174-40 access ways to non in non-residential districts, a motion to have town council clarify and explain in sixth grade language. No, don't say that in <laughs> your motion. They can't say that. And explain to the planning board. Or it's really just a yes or no question, yeah. Exactly what this section means. Understood. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye, okay. Aye. Um, and so further, as I was contemplating uh, the, the new road, the potential for a new road, um, you know, obviously we've discussed this ad nauseum, the ideal land use decision here is um, access from Nicoletta's Way. We've been through this. There was a valiant attempt to um, make that work between parties. Um, and um, we, are con we also are struck with the, you know, the, the a constitutional question about rights of access and private property rights. And then also a safety consideration for a new intersection between two existing roads. Um, in my opinion, it seems to me that the, that a way where everyone walks away maybe slightly uncomfortable but generally satisfied is if the private road of Nicoletta's Way um, were, the layout were taken for as a public way and access granted as a public way and then the owners of Nicoletta's liabilities and maintenance responsibilities in the way go away uh, the town would assume those responsibilities and the right of access issue that the applicant is currently confronted with also goes away and the neighbors across the street don't have to deal with construction, the potential for a new intersection traffic. So to me, that seems like hmm. the ultimate win, win, win. Um, obviously, this has not been discussed with um, the trustees or the owners of Nicoletta's Way, um, but it is certainly a mechanism that the town has at its disposal, um, where all three parties maybe don't get everything, but all feel a, cert a, f a much stronger level of, of comfort. Mm -hmm. The only thing we would get is safety. I did note, actually, I was going through the record of the Cape Cod Commission decision earlier, um, and there were, there were numerous public comments submitted for the 2002, I think, decision relative to the clearing. Yes. And a, there was contemplation at that time of a public taking of this road. Um, why it didn't happen, I do not know. Um, I haven't dip, do, taken a deep dive into uh, the history in that regard. Um, but that's another question I wouldn't mind posing to Catherine and Council. Mm -hmm. um, because it just seems like a prudent endeavor. So I, I'd like to authorize the town planner to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Do we need a motion? I would do a motion on it. So be. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's a good idea, though. Yeah. Um, can we also ask the town planner to um, approach the trust, the, Nicol the people who own Nicoletta's Way, um, and update the Board of Selectmen on this somehow? Because this would, this, this taking of this road would have to be an action approved by the town. Yeah, right. Yes. So can I get a motion for that as well? So be. So this is this is to authorize the town planner to talk to the owners of Nicoletta Way and, and update the Board of Selectmen about this. So what you're saying is it would be on the May meeting? Well, no, maybe not. There's they a lot of mechanics I, to work out, but. Uh, right. I mean, assuming. But right, that's the soonest that's it would be. Soonest. So I think that we should give a little bit of an update, some type of correspondence to the select board so it, 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 we don't get that crunch time and they don't know what's going on. And It is a dual step process. First, the town requires a vote to authorize the selectmen 
to yes. lay out the streets and yes. actually prepare the plan. And then if, at the subsequent town meeting, the town votes to accept the layout after the board reviews the plan. So it's a, it requires two town meetings. Two town meetings? Yes. That all depends if Nicola Way wants to do this. I mean, That's right. By eminent domain, we could take it from him, but I, we wouldn't do that. You know, I mean, unless it. We'd have to pay for it. <clears throat> no, we have to pay for it, yeah. But the only way I, I can see by doing that, if it was a big safety issue, and the town was, gee, you're obligated to do this because it's a safety issue. You got the parks with the kids playing, yeah. bicycles, people walking, and stuff. The reconstruction of the bike path, sidewalk, I mean, there's some expense for us, too. Um, so there's a, I have a motion. I thought I had a second. Yep. All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed or abstaining? Okay. So there's that. Thank we're, you. We're still going to do the traffic study, right? All that's. Yeah. Oh, yes. I haven't crossed that off. Okay. <laughs> okay. Traffic. So, um, Evan uh, drafted up uh, a, a motion at my request. Can you give one to Karen? I, I have. Oh, you have I one? Got it. Oh, yeah. good, because I'm going to pass that down there. Why don't you guys read? Um, this would be the motion to seek traffic engineering and transportation planning consultant assistant in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53G, and the Town of Mashpee Rules and Regulations Governing the Subdivision of Land for the review of the proposed 532 Main Street Lamar Drive Definitive Subdivision submitted by Marcelo Magnelny, Pub <clears throat> property owner consistent with the scope of work outlined in the request for quote prepared by Town Planner Evan Lair and distributed Two qualified firms for solicitation dated October 11, 2022, and further to authorize the town planner to request payment from the applicant in the amount not to exceed the lowest quoted price from the qual a qualified bidder. Okay, I have to add that. From a qualified bidder. Because somebody can come in and say, I'll do it for a dollar. Yeah. And then we're toast. 50 cents. <laughs> So the, um, uh, I had talked to town planner about the motion and um, the only thing that I would ask that if it could be included in the motion, if I have, we haven't reviewed the, the, uh, uh, the, the, what was it? the scope, the scope, if there was any um, questions or requests to change the scope or limit the scope from our engineer, instead of having to come back before the board to get that approval, could it, we leave it within the discretion of town planner? <clears throat> That sound I'm good fine. to everybody? Yeah. Okay, so I'm add that fine. to the motion as well, authorizing uh, town, uh, town planner Evan Lair to slightly modify the scope of work after discussion with the proponents, the project proponents, uh, traffic engineer or engineer. Yeah, if necessary. Thank you. If necessary, thank you. Everybody go with it? Yep. yep. We have a motion? So be. Second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone aye. opposed or abstaining? Okay. I, I, anything else, Evan? I don't think so. Um, I will follow up with you relative to that final quote I'm expecting. I'll also submit that to the board. You do have all of the quotes and the scope in your packets tonight. Yes. I'll provide them to you digitally as well. Um, I think the the only question here is a is a is a schedule is a scheduling one. Um, if we anticipate another seven days for the final quote, uh, we have some discussions relative to the scope. Um, we'll need to and and assuming we agree on the scope and it's uh, we're in a position to award to award a contract to a bidder. Um, we would need to draw up that contract and have it executed by the town. Um, and that does take some time, but not too much time. But um, it's a question of when we continue this hearing to. So assuming that takes two to four weeks to procure a consultant, um, and 
four to six weeks to complete the study. Um, those, I think that's what you need to be cognizant of, six to eight weeks. So could we do it the, uh, the, do you have two meetings in December or just one? I believe we currently have two scheduled, but I don't know what dates they fall upon. Okay. I think it's December 7th and 21st. Well, it doesn't sound like the seventh is realistic. I mean, we could certainly put it on to the seventh, and I could simply request a. You want to do it on the twenty fifth? Yeah. <laughs> Christmas Eve. Seventh of the twenty first. Twenty first isn't that bad. No. You know what's really terrible is the first Wednesday in January. Right, it's yeah. always freezing cold. We've had all this time off. But, all right, so let's do it for um, December. 21st, that is a Wednesday, right? It is. Okay, it's 710, how's that? Good, so we'll continue the public hearing. Yep, I need a motion. We'll continue the public hearing to September 21st at 710. Second. There's a second, all in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed or abstaining? Okay. Great, thank you very much. Oh, oh, we can, suggestion. yep. You know when you go by a lot of industrial parks, when you go down the highway, it says trucks entering and trucks exiting. Why don't we put a sign up at 130 when they come up with a sandwich to say, hey, when you get near the industrial park, there's going to be trucks entering. You know, just give them a heads up. You know, there, there's not there is, one there. There is one further down where Pickle Cove, where the cement trucks go off to the. Oh, yeah. There is one there. There's, there's one so there. Could, there would be, I mean, so. Maybe a little closer though, yeah. I think it just help out a yeah. little, you know. So I, I don't know who you see with DPW, Catherine. We'll say it again, Dennis. Who would you see to put the sign up? The traffic sign would be Catherine, assuming yeah. it's in a, in a town layout. This is an idea. Hmm. But John, you think there's already one down there? Yeah, we're not down. close enough. Further. Let's further uh, down. But if you had a couple, you know, yeah. that would slow people down. So like, you know, give them a heads up. So do With you, you want to get me too. like an address you want it at and then we'll write a memo? Yeah, I'll go look and uh, I'll yeah. go tell you. Yeah. All right. So did the board actually take the vote on the continuance? Oh, uh, <laughs> all in five you say aye? I mean, aye. Yeah, we did. I thought we did. Yeah, I, think I wasn't we did. sure. I, was, I just wanted I to make sure because uh, we yeah, we really did. did. How'd right, we perfect. do, Chrissy? Did we? Yes. Okay. okay. Perfect. Thank you very much, everybody. And all right. I would say I'd see you in December, but I actually. Oh, it's so awesome. I'll see you for Tudor Terrace. Yeah, all <laughs> right. Good. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. And you know, you, updates, you uh, know, yes. give to Evan. Keep him in the loop of everything, I okay? Will Thank you. All right. Uh, local comprehensive plan. Okay. I want to start with the survey. I did get more comments from some of you, and I'm appreciative. Um, I'm compiling a memo to Weston and Sampson um, that I want to be relatively granular, uh, and I want to capture all of the final feedback and send it one time because the process for editing this is, is starting to make me lose my mind. Uh, because about the survey, it's just it's just it's too much. I'm dealing with bureaucracy to edit the survey. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I'm I'm trying to get very comprehensive with regard to my final responses because I want them to be the final responses because every time I go through this, I'm finding something new that I want that needs editing. Um, and I outlined some of the, the things I'd like to, I'm gonna share with you a few things that I think are absolute necessi necessary changes here. Um, not substantive changes to questions, but it's, it's to generally to format. First, I noted, and John Reflect had the same comment in, in comments he just submitted to me tonight, but um, almost all of our multi-part questions or, or questions that ask about, for example, how important the following factors are or were in your decision to live in Mashpee. And we list all of those potential options and then we have a scale, you know, very important, important. Um, every single one of those questions has, uh, it had one, two, three, four, five, they're different scale. It had a massive scale. Like it wasn't, at first it was different. The scale was consistent across, but we had very important, somewhat important, important neutral. It was too many options. Good. Right. Um, so I propose that we remove one level, one scale level. Um, so it would be very important, important, neutral, unimportant, very unimportant. Get rid of one. Right. Um, 
What about two? And very, sometimes there's, there needs to be a not applicable. Very or NA, right. Or NA. Say it again, please, Karen. Do you need very unimportant? Could you get rid of that one, the end? Well, if you're going to get rid of the end, you got to get rid of the top. So it would be important, okay. neutral, unimportant. Yeah, you need, you need five options that sound or reasonable? three options. Yes, plus some of them you need to say not applicable. So do you want to say important, okay. neutral, unimportant, and not applicable? Well, I think you want to know. If it's not applicable, I think you want the level. I think you want the level of importance and unimportance. Okay. I, I think two on either side and a neutral down the middle is fine. All right. Seven or nine. I mean, some of them had so seven options. A, as as described, we would have five Four. options. Five. What and then a not again? important, neutral, very important, important, neutral, unimportant, very important. You need very important. You, you don't. We're just suggesting. Important. You one. need very important. Yeah, you need. Uh, people People make the difference between very important and important. Right. Then you need the last one. You very don't. Very unimportant. Yeah. Yep. We had an additional one in here is what I'm saying. Somewhat. You know, we had a somewhat. Yeah. yeah. And I so, think that's somewhat crazy. Yeah, that's, that's, right. that's, that's right. So on one of them, the one of the questions, it's like, um, why do you live in Mashpee? Right. And it said, because of, it's my ancestral homeland. Right. Yep. If we don't put not applicable or it in that column for that for the it's just it's just I didn't know how to answer it. I'm like, do I say neutral? Yeah, some of them needed a not applicable. Yeah. yeah. So there's right. some that needs a not. I'll find the not applicable. And it's usually when you're talking something personal, like, a fact. like it's a fact. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um. I'll, I'll tell you what I did that survey. When I got halfway to it. I said, this is too long. There's I stop. And I'm, if there's I'm another, like um, a lot of people in mass be a survey like that. People, all, like, right? Too many. Do you like it? No. Yes. No. You know? I, I sent it to several people. The quickest was 15 minutes. I think they were lying to me. <laughs> That's, oh, yeah. I, I yeah. got that too. I, and there's I, no I think way. they I were did, just being like, "Oh, I got it done." And I did 20 minutes and I smoked through it. No, if I, you know. Right, and some people it took up to 50 minutes because they were writing comments. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I and know. so I stopped. I started writing comments into those comment boxes, and it took me forty minutes. I believe that. Um, so it's long, and I think it's. I think it's okay. I th I think that when I was reading the questions, I understood the questions. It'll speed up if you get rid of the options. Well, you know, if you I have, narrow those options down. Yeah. But I think that in the introduction, you should say how many questions there are, right, and say. Um, you know, this is this investment is an investment in Mashpee, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Um, you well, know, we please, about being please, able to... you know, please finish. And yeah, we want people to take well, the time to do it right. That's, that's what, what I did. I mean, we did talk about people having the option to go back and finish it. Yeah, right? can they do that? They should yes. be able to. And I have two other suggestions that I think will, not substantially, but will carve five minutes out of this endeavor. That's a lot of time. Um, what the other thing I noticed was that for those same multi-part questions where we ask about a level of importance and we provide a number of options, that whoever entered the survey did every single option, response option, town character, taxes, investment opportunities, um, as its own multiple choice question. So every option had a choice for every scale. So right. town character had very important, important, neutral, and important, very important. Taxes mm -hmm. had the same. So we need to do this as a matrix where it's like this. So the top, yes. the top is the scale, the column is the choices, and there are radio buttons in the middle. So it's, you can All just right. click through as opposed to scrolling up and down the whole page. Uh, scrolling up and down is a page. So the, um, that pertains to 50% of our survey. Yeah. That um, so that's going to substantially remove time. And then the last thing I, I wanted to suggest as I was going through it um, is that, you know, I think we did a good job of like, considering every possible action item to ask the town. But as I was going through it, I kind of felt like in that you know, worthwhile endeavor, we began asking incredibly granular questions that might be beyond the level of understanding or, or knowledge base that example. of the community. Like for example, um, uh, this is question seven. It was a housing related question. We provided 10 response options about um, the level, the extent of which you would support or oppose 
housing strategies. And we got really into like uh, bonding and loan programs and a lot of things that I just don't think right. will resonate with people. Right. Um, so I, pr I think it would be prudent for us to strike some of those items that I don't think people will feel compelled to respond in a way that they are confident in and keep it to the things um, I've put down here, four choices. Okay, what are they? Height and density bonuses in exchange for a significant portion being attainable, affordable, and workforce housing. Okay. Allow multifamily housing in all of or portions of the town's residential districts. That takes two choices and takes it one. No, I think you need to separate those. Okay. You have to separate those because that's a discussion out there. Okay. Allow it in all areas of town or just some, and the next question, in some areas of town. Trust me, I talk to people all the well, time. Well, it, it was all residential or some residential, right? Right. It, it was done in a way where it didn't consider um, a mixture of uses in commercial districts. Right. Um, so, yeah, and so this one is dealing only with residential districts, the way this particular question is posed. Um, and really what I was trying to get at is that, you know, do, do you support multifamily housing in the town? Yeah, is that the... You know, um, and then if the answer yes, well then maybe a follow-up question is, you know, okay, well where? Um, but we can answer, we can ask it as, as two. I just think it's taking up valuable real, survey real estate. Um, the two other options are town program to encourage more accessory dwelling units. And I think I've left something off here because all it says at the end is attainable affordable housing choices. But ultimately what I'm suggesting here is um, a reduction in the number of options. Um, and you have to you have to have in the land donation of town owned land for affordable housing. The reason that I didn't necessarily think it's prudent to include that is because the town has regularly supported that for decades now. Right, but right now you know? people we need to gauge that we need to gauge that uh, interest now too. But isn't don't we know the interest? Like is the yeah, is the is the benefit Trust me. Yeah, who's, put it in there. Who's going to oppose it? Because if people say no 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 then when we get to our land use chapter, we know what to say. We need that information. Okay. Yeah, and, the t and, the, and the town providing, uh, do we want to say that the town, should the town provide uh, subsidies and financial support for the development of affordable housing? That was in there. It was in there, and I proposed Took removing it, it as well. Do people know the mechanics of these things? No, they oh, don't. They don't. You know, I, I just don't think they know well, how to sometimes respond. Sometimes people learn from taking well, a survey. I, 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 I mean, think people know the questions stupid. to ask, but we want to understand their, their level of, of, of knowledge. And if someone doesn't know how to respond and they're just responding to respond, right, then the data's bad. Yeah, they're just gone. All right, yeah. so what's the first one? It's it's height and density with a portion uh, of the units yep. put aside for affordable housing. Okay. And then something about the multifamily housing in in all residential districts or in some residential districts. And that we'll, will we'll be make question two. one, two, and three. And then a program to encourage ADUs. Right. And I have... Town-owned land. Do you yeah, support that must be these? what that is. Do you find any of these at the, you know, like a... <clears throat> Like, what is an ADU? Like, do you have at the back? We probably should just say accessory dwelling unit and put a little sub, like a little note yeah, in there about what we're talking what about. It is. Yeah, we'll do that. So use of town on land, and um, yeah, I think it's I think it's important to ask: Do you do you support the town subsidizing uh, housing in town? Okay. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's, Remember, it's better. This it's is, half. <laughs> there's, there's of, of everybody's top two concerns in town, right? Climate change isn't there. We have more questions about climate change in this than housing. Housing is there. It's either the water, then housing, or the housing, then water. Yeah. Everybody I talk to, it's one of those two is the top. There was a lot of climate change. Yeah, so, I think. Um, too much climate change. Yeah, too much climate change. Lot. Do you want to get. More housing. <laughs> Yeah. Which would the board you have a choice, like me? Right? <laughs> so ultimately, what I'd like to do hereafter is get these, provide a comprehensive memo, detailed question by question, so I can send it to Weston Sampson to make these changes one last time. Mm. All right. Um, and present you with a final draft for your review. And if there's anything that is uh, still substandard in consideration of what your expectations are, 
or something that's missing, um, we'll deal with it again. So what question was the housing question? I believe it's seven. Seven, you're right, it was too long. So that will, that will tighten that up. And then a few other areas that I think, um, like question 44, I wanna double check if there are more, but there are some questions asked as a multiple choice question when they were intended as a yes or a no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, that's correct. So there's time there. People are thinking about the response when it's much easier to say yes or no. Um, so those are the things I'm thinking about, things I'm gonna tell Weston Sampson, unless you tell me otherwise, to do. Well, I have more comments for you. Uh, question three, I think, was the one that needed a do not, does not apply. Okay. Question seven, which was your housing question. Yeah. The question on top, it doesn't have the word housing in it. Okay. And it tripped me up. Like, I didn't know we were talking about housing until I started answering it. Okay, so I think I it needs the word housing in there. Okay. Housing production, something like that. Um, do you have, you don't have this Mary, in front of you. don't know what housing production is. Well, I'm telling him to, to, to introduce the word, the topic housing in the question. Housing. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, question eight. You don't have it in front of you, do you? I don't. Um, I didn't know if we should um, give examples. It was, I forget what the question was. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get on. I can't get online. Um, okay. So question 12 and 13, you can pick all. Like, I, I, I was choosing them, and I was like, yeah, these are all important to me. So you can pick them all. And I'm yeah, like, I did. is that what you were talking yeah, about? Yeah. Like, we should pick, pick our all. top five or top three no, or I something? I them all. Yeah. Yeah, I picked them all. I'm like, that's not going to help mm. anything. Yeah, we want to gauge a certain a level of priority. And right. of course, like. Because all of these things are important to you, but we want to know what's the, what's the most pressing. Gotta, stuff. What's the, okay, so y'all gonna work on that, and then and I give it as a ranking as well. Yeah, that was a question 12, 13, 22, 25, 22. Yeah, but then question twenty three, you can only pick one answer. Twenty three. So I was like, oh, it should say something in the question. If you, if, you know, if it's you're only can do one, then you should your question should be pick your top. Um, and then again, those climate questions at the end, I felt like I was answering the same question twice. Yeah, I, I kind of have that same Was feeling. that 40 and 30, uh, 40 and 43? I felt like I was answering the same question again. So I think we can ditch at least one climate change question. There were a couple around transportation too that maybe you could Oh, I was like- Combine. I was like, there okay, was a, I, there were a lot of I felt like I was saying, I want sidewalks again and again and again right. and again. And I'm like, maybe right. that's what. I think, I think, I mean, I think, I think, do you think there was some lost in translation? Because we've had this conversation already about the, about transportation questions, or at least I'm certain we had, but it's the bureaucracy, it's like playing telephone with whoever it, okay. Weston mm -hmm. Sampson is doing this, which is why I want to do a very detailed memo. Thank you for bringing up the traffic thing, because I felt the same up. way. I was like, and traffic just flow. Answer this question. Yeah. Right. Not traffic, traffic flow, congestion. not traffic congestion. Traffic flow. But yeah. monkey survey is is easy to use. Mm. You yeah. know, it reads well, it's kind on the eyes. You can quickly um, pick the choices. It's, there's no lag. So I I'm I, I know there's only a select person that can make changes to it, but I think it's worth it. Any other comments on the survey? Yeah. So what are you gonna do next? I am going to take your comments. I'm gonna write it line by line, question by question, detailed memo, like showing what I want the question to look like. Good. I see, yeah. And send it to them so that the person who's making the question doesn't have like a, they actually have, I'm, okay. I'm making the survey. Yeah. Now will they offer like guidance back or they just take it and do it? Um, at this point, well at this, what? Ashley worked through with us on developing the question. So at yeah. this point, I'm just trying to make it functional in consideration of what you've asked us to do. Okay, so if we if we remove something that she thinks should absolutely be there, this is you, this us. is your survey. So yeah, I mean, she might say, Evan, are you sure this is a good idea?" But um, well, no. that's why we're that's why we're paying them. It, if she thinks know. it's important, she'll yeah, say. Yeah, no. Right. If if she, if she thinks it's a mistake, she'll let me know, and I'll let you know. Okay. 
All right, so are we gonna get another beta test or? So what I'd like to do is get this done in a, in a format that's ready to issue and give it to you one more time. Good. Um, just to tie up any loose ends um, and do this relatively quickly um, because it has been anything but efficient. Um, and so I would like to get this done over the next few weeks, present it to you at perhaps your second meeting in November for a launch sometime thereafter. When is that meeting? When is that meeting? I'll look up my calendar. Is Thanksgiving the next day? Yeah. Next day so Thanksgiving. we meet first meeting in December. So do, do we meet November second and November sixteenth. Right. Uh -oh. Right. That's okay. Yeah, because the the following week is Thanksgiving. Okay. All right. So that's that's what I'm proposing is um. Sixteenth. Yes. Yeah. Good. And then you know it's terrible to launch right before Thanksgiving, but. The early December is not a bad time, and we could we could do a new year, start the year off right, reminder, <laughs> right? So, you know, extend it a little bit into January. Um, hmm. Do it once. The kids yeah. will be yeah. on vacation. Maybe we can get them a grade or something if they do the survey with their parents oh, yeah. over the break. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so workshops and focus groups. Uh, we will be concluding our workshops on November 13th with the uh, Wampanoag Tribe at the general membership meeting there. Um, I did have a online workshop for parents of school-age children, and no one attended. That's mm -hmm. too bad. I thought um, that I thought somebody had a technical problem. The one person did, um, That's but true. I we got not a single other report of any other. Uh, and that issue. nice lady who attended, did you did you get her comments about? I did get a written comment, um, and I can obviously we have that. But I mean, all the questions you were going to ask, was she, did she have the opportunity to answer those? No, but I can sum submit. Do you want to her? send her? Because I know she. I I I. I saw that, and so I contacted her on Facebook. Yeah, same. Yeah, I'd send her those worksheets. Yeah, I can do send that. Send her all the worksheets, because I think she'll fill them all out. I can do that. And weren't we going to do a virtual, a general virtual oh my God. one? We were. Yeah. It's fallen by the wayside. Um, I need to organize that. Do you want to do that after November 13th? Probably. Yeah. I'm getting busy again. Because the 13th is the is the... Uh, right. Tribal right. council uh, meeting. I think it's. I think it's important that we go to their formal meeting and present it then, and then be available in their foyer to work with people. They were supposed to have a social that uh, weekend, but I haven't heard. Um, but um, if we can get it confirmed that we're absolutely on that agenda. Yeah, I was going to say, can we? I mean, um, we've been canceled so many times. Yeah, I don't think. Oh, for the 13th? Yeah. Um, yes, at some point, uh, we, we have to stop. We have to move on to the next right? step. Um, but I'm confident we'll, I mean, barring any major issue, I mean, we'll, we'll be there. And, and um, I spoke to Cassie Jackson, who is their secretary. Yeah. And what I didn't realize was that she's really the person that pulls that agenda together. She is, yeah. Um, it took me a while to figure out, uh, and you know, shook my hand on it. So, <laughs> um, the thirteenth. So you want to follow up with her because I think we should follow up with her and say because we want to start advertising it to tribal citizens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can do that. All right, all right, and then uh, get something together, some date virtually with Weston and Sampson. Okay. And um, we need like two weeks to advertise it. And that way, anybody who's missed that opportunity, one last opportunity, you know, we can get it on Facebook. We can send it out to the school on Facebook. Yeah, let's um, do that. And then it's that. Then it's done. Sounds good. Um, we have a lot of workshop data. Has that been compiled in matrix form yet? I'm fairly confident that it has. I, 
I have to double check. Yeah, um, I think everybody is seeing the very first workshop that we yep. did in April. Can mm. you believe it? That was, it was like cataloged and it had numbers of hits on different, con it was really, it, w it was something that you could see, you could see trends in the data. That was easier to codify because it was dot voting. So right. we, could, we could track the dots. Oh, was that what those that's, numbers That's were? how we're able to make it show levels of priority. Right. But we didn't do dot voting for the other workshops. We did a force field analysis. So mm. um, we have an initial draft of a matrix, but it doesn't translate that well. And I feel like Ashley has resolved it, but I need to double check and I'll provide it to the board. Here. Remember like that some of those, somebody, people were like, like all six tables that were participating brought up the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So you know what I mean? If you can see that it's coming up again and again and again. Yep. yep. Um, I'm 99% confident I do have that compiled, and okay. we do have some uh, updating to do to the planmashpee.com website, which um, we're working on as well. So we'll yeah. include those things on the website, um, all of the engagement we've done thereafter. Because I think we need to get those trends before we start working on any vision statement or action plan. Okay. Right? Because it's... Yeah, you need the data. We were all there. Where you, know? where you are, where you want to go, and how you get there. So, and that brings up the updating the vision statement. So, um, th two things left, um, really to get into actual like drafting of the document, are working on the vision statement. Um, I'm going to hope that we definitely have those things ma matrices produced because um, uh, we want to get working on that with you, with a in this special meeting. Um, we could probably do this in a regular meeting. I just want to see. Uh, I'm reviewing my meeting notes from Weston and Sampson. While you're looking at that, what do you have in mind about, without telling me what you, substantively what you want, updating the vision statement? Are we talking about something short? Because, you know, we've got I, I the select th board and then you have Tom Fidalis. Well, I think the, the 1998 vision statement is a, a beautiful statement. I just think there are some um, uh, inconsistencies in it with the new existing condition that we need to consider. Mm. Um, and also new things like climate change. So you're looking at something a little bit lengthy. Well, it's your vision. This is the town's vision. Um, but I think we've always been circulating around um, taking the vision that was adopted in 1998 and just reflecting on it and updating it. Updating it. And I think that's for you all to, to yeah, do. Based on um, current condition. No, we could all take we could take stabs at it. You know, um, Wes and Sampson and, and ourselves based on myself based on the engagement. But ultimately, um, we'd like y you to do this um, mm -hmm. and provide some discussion and debate relative to the vision statement. Well, it's going to be informed by the the data that data we collected, the focus groups. Yeah. And kind of the survey too. Mm -hmm. I mean, the sur we the, um, I did a survey at work, and I think everybody was befuddled. They didn't know what they wanted. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm hoping this one, people pick so, things and there's a trend. I don't want to, um, I'd like to encourage us to continue like producing drafts and producing work, understanding that we might need to update something mm -hmm. after oh, yeah. we complete the survey. But I would like to get working on this. So we were, uh, let's see, we would like to uh, review the existing vision statement and work on language um, to propose to you for discussion purposes for the 12-7 meeting. So the first meeting in December, get working on vision. Um, and we'll be much closer to a survey at that point. Maybe we'll be in a survey. So we would have the <laughs> new beta test prior, the final, prior and we'd to have the, um, what do you call it, the short versions or the what is it, Mary, that, that we're, we're calling it? You know, the, what the evidence showed on each workshop. Oh, like the yeah, matrix. The, the, the matrix. Yeah. So we have that, those two. We can write a vision statement. Yeah, we, yeah we, we really need all that data that we, I mean, we spent so okay. much time yeah, collecting that data. Yeah. We, I mean, we can't. We have to look at that before. Uh, we have to have that available to us before we We'll prioritize December that 7th. and make sure you have it prior to 12 7. Yeah. But prior to 12-7, um, the other things we want to begin doing, and maybe you want to push this off. Um, we were thinking 11-30 for this, a special workshop for the board um, to begin defining proposed actions. Um, 
I think if you get us all the background data, we have the survey results, we have the vision statement, the action steps are gonna fall in place. I don't disagree, but again, I don't wanna wait till the end of a survey to begin working on these things. Like we can always edit, update, delete, cancel, add, um, pursuant to the findings of a survey. But I don't want to not do it. I mean, we learned a lot throughout the process. We can conceivably come up with the base, the, the 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 skeleton of an action plan. The themes, yeah. Um, and if there are gross mischaracterizations or deviations, we amend it. Um, we were, we we Weston Sampson and I wanted to uh, draft a memo with proposed actions for you to consider in consideration of the data received, um, and hold a workshop on those. On a special meeting outside of your regular meetings on November 30th, which is a Wednesday. Um, if it's not on that date, we'd like to do this at a date certain at your convenience. Um, but these are the these are the things that we want to be working on on now. Um, we're about a year on our contract. Mm -hmm. um, we have 18 months, so um, between doing all, getting the survey done. Uh, final workshops, producing all the producing drafts and shopping drafts. This is going to take some time. Yeah. So I just want to make sure that we. What, we, we when keep is the contract up exactly? <sighs> April. April thirtieth. I am, it's mid. It's middle of the month at some point. I, I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, the I date. Think, of, I'm, I'm telling you, November thirtieth is too soon. So when did you say that? We're thinking of of. You have November 13th, the Tribal Council. Yes, which we are 100% ready for. All the preparation is done for that. And then we have to schedule one last virtual. Yes, which we're essentially ready for as well. We just need to pick a date and advertise. Then we're thinking of launching the survey first, first week in December? Yes. And you can get us all the data by when? When are we saying that? Prior to your first meeting in December. Yeah. Probably the week prior. You see how it's it's too much of an overlap. And then when when we when was the visioning stuff going to come to us? We proposed that on the first meeting in December. So I think we I think we need to do the. The, I think we need to have a special meeting the second weekend week in December about actions. That's fine. You know what I mean? Like I think One that the, that yeah. yeah, we won't be wait, the, we'll be waiting for the survey results, but not everything else. Yep. So okay. I think the week of the twelfth to the sixteenth. Sounds good. I uh, will follow up with Weston and Samson. Now, I know we usually have meetings on Wednesdays, but that second Wednesday of the month, I am I have a commission meeting. Um, the housing committee meets on the second Tuesday of the month. Ugh. How about, how about that Thursday, the 15th? That's fine. It'll just be dependent on uh, Wes and Sam's availability, but I will follow up with them. Um, so I can usually swing a Monday meeting or a, well, Monday might be Board of Selectmen. Let's target that Thursday. Right. That wasn't anything for CPC yet, was it? <laughs> it's not there. It's not the scheduled meeting. It just depends if we get a lot of applications. We'll want to add some meetings, but you go first. <laughs> um, well, maybe we could, we could have something at 5. Is 5 too early? I think it's a Thursday. It's a Thursday. December 15th at 5 o'clock. Um, well, it's up to us. Well, you're giving them a lot of notice. Should be fine. Yeah. But we're all real busy. <laughs> Once, you know, unless it's that fifth Wednesday of the month, you know, it's, um, yeah. Good. All right. Let's try for that date. We need to do one of those doodle calendars. That's good. That seems good. 
We're seeing like we're getting things going. Right? Yeah. Um, and have they made, I submitted a ton of comments on the existing conditions. Have they incorporated those changes? You, they have everything you've sent, yeah. Okay. Right. But have they incorporated it into the? I haven't seen the existing conditions yeah. in some time. I, I'm going to say yes okay. and hope that it's done. All right. And you know I like to see things redlined. I know you do. Do they do that? Are they going to do that? I will, f I will ask them, Mary. All right. Okay. I'll call Blake. I'll ask him. <laughs> I will ask. All right. Um, all right. Anything else about the LCP? Anybody? No, no, that's everything for me. That's great. It's a lot of work. Um, I think we already did affordable and workforce housing. I don't think we have an ADU workshop. I'm going to start organizing that with Jennifer. Um, it's just spearhead scheduling. Uh, we're doing community development coffee hours in my office on Fridays now with um, conservation planning, board of health, and stuff to you know contemplate. Good where for you. Just discuss where we're at, so we're on, on the same page and aligned. Good. Um, and that's an opportunity for me to start thinking about what we'll need for this workshop. And uh, once I have them on board, my fellow department heads, um, I'm going to have Jennifer spearhead kind of the advertising and and. Uh, scheduling of, of the event. Uh, so I'll follow up with you once we have a little bit more rolling, but I'm going to start thinking about doing this as it gets darker and people need things to do inside. Can I ask, is that a workshop in, in uh, staff and board committees? It's not for the public to learn about how to create an ADU? Absolutely for the public to learn how to create it an is, ADU. So. Yeah, and so I, my anticipation would be to contact you and others at HAC to participate with us in, in doing that. What if you get a rush of people, where are you going to put them? Oh, we're Cross that bridge when we get there. <laughs> we have a meeting room. Yeah, I can. You know, well, um, I could do this by sign up only as well. Yeah, you know, twenty five attendees great. and do multiple. No. If you could give notice to the building department. Yep. That we're looking for people that are interested. I know housing assistance probably has a list of people that have contacted them, but um, sometimes people come into the building department and ask about the accessory dwelling unit, the ADU bylaw. If you could have them uh, jot down those people's sure. names, that might be a good way to. Um, sure. You know. And do they do any enforcement downstairs for illegal apartments? They would if they are aware of an illegal apartment. Yeah. Uh, but we do have the amnesty provision in our um, in our accessory apartment bylaw. I know of one enforcement situation uh, for an illegal accessory apartment that's off of Nathan Ellis High, off 151. Um, the only reason that, that we were made aware of it is because they built an illegal staircase to the top uh, without a permit. So they were able to enforce it <laughs> and have them remove the, the staircase. Um, so that was one situation where, yes, they did enforce an illegal apartment it, very recently. So I just don't know if it would be advantageous to have anybody they've been talking to at all in any way. Yeah, know? totally. All right. So we'll get working on that. That's good. Um, all right, clean uh, water initiative. Hey, we passed. Yeah. Low impact development at town meeting. All right. That sounds like a quick meeting, too. Great, great job, everybody. We, we, oh. we passed a clean water bylaw, and we were the ones to do it. So. <laughs> All the other ones are like, coming back in May, coming yeah. back in May. So May is going to be very interesting. A lot um, longer than 30 minutes. Yeah. Chairman's report, that I've already covered everything. Um, town planning report? Um, I just wanted to, so Alex Beltran, who was my intern this summer, um, was always working on the comprehensive plan, but in the, I wanted to give him an opportunity to produce um, something he could cite on a resume as yeah. he's looking for jobs, um, a research project, if you will. Um, and we started with uh, something larger in scope, but I ultimately, I, in consideration of our redevelopment goals and priorities and uh, conceptual ideas, um, I wanted him to review, initially I wanted him to review current zoning and make recommendations for, um, really conduct an analysis of current zoning and some limitations and um, for his own exercise to make recommendations in a report um, that would be expected of an agency. Um, but given the scope of work that he took on for the comprehensive plan, we, had, we modified that independent project um, and had him review 
case studies of redevelopment projects of, of generally suburban auto dependent use, uses um, into more mixed use um, walkable pedestrian friendly neighborhoods. Um, and he did. I, I was, he was smarter than me when I was 22. Yeah, um, he did. His, he did, his, he, I think he's very well written. Um, and yeah, I, I just wanted to say thank you to him. Um, uh, I think it's a nice piece of work. It's like I can see a little bit of myself in it. Um, and I just wanted to share it with you uh, for your own uh, perusal. Um, and uh, perhaps to send him uh, a note of thanks or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Are you going to post this? I um, thought it was exceptional. I, I, I could post a, it. He really did a nice job. We've got some space on the website. We'll find some space for him. Yeah, it's really good. Um, so I just, I just wanted to extend a thank you to him and put it on an agenda so that you saw it and um, got in a packet and it was part of the record. Good, good. All right. Um, I think you did the update and discussion regular, right, relative to the housing production plan. I did. Okay. Uh, board member committee reports. Cape Cod Commission, I have no uh, report. Evan, did we get notification of, of their hearings anymore? Um, I do. Um, I'm fairly confident that I do. I feel like we received notice if there's a, a decision that's related to the town. Like, um, how do you get their agenda? Do they have an automatic? I don't get can it. you sign I, up? I don't get the agenda. You might be able to sign up and get it. And get it. All right. I'm going to um, call their office, because they used to mail their agenda to us. I will make you guys aware that the commission called me last week um, relative to the grocery store proposal on Shellback Way. Um, they were seeking my comments relative to consistency with zoning and the comprehensive plan. I've submitted those comments. Um, and they let me know that they're looking to schedule the, the op to open the public hearings for this DRI um, cool. the first week of November or the second week of November. So uh, I will get an official notice and I'll pass it along to you in okay. emails. Good. Every Is that a I subcommittee meeting? Yes. Every week I get asked. What kind of grocery stores go in there? I said, I don't know. <laughs> are they are they looking for a curb cut on twenty eight? Yep. They 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 are looking for it at this juncture. Yes, that'd be the best. So. A, a one direction. Um, they, it's a one a right in right in right turnout right turn in right turn out only as proposed. Mm -hmm. No access to Job's Fishing Road, which I did discuss in my memo. Yeah, we really like bad. to see no, access to Joe's fishing. Years ago, said no to that. I just hope, you know, ideally, that at least pedestrian access. So if you mm -hmm. want to take a left, you'd come out to the lights? Is that what they want? So you would have ingress and egress from Shellback Way to, um, like, past the bank to Shellback yeah. Way, you take a left to the light, and you're facing Route 28 with mm -hmm. at Charles Street across towards Marshalls. Yeah. So you have a light to take a left. And then also a left turn in, or excuse me, a right turn in, right turn out, uh, in the frontage of the parcel on 28. So you have a back way out to shell back and then a, a front yep. entrance in it, as proposed. Let's try to keep some of the traffic down off of shell back way. Right, okay. Those people were all concerned up there. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so Community Preservation Committee, we had a public hearing. I think it was two weeks ago now. Um, I think we had four or five people from the audience and a lot of comments, um, so it was good. Um, applications for the Community Preservation Committee are due November 17th. Are you thinking of anything, Evan? Uh, I have a couple things that it won't come from my office, it will come from property owners in the town. Um, notably, one, proper, one parcel, um, on a Schumann Road connecting to Main Street for affordable housing, uh, mm -hmm. an affordable housing acquisition. Um, it's about 100,000 square feet. It would be a great small project. Um, seller, it's seller's interest, the seller approached the town um, to gauge interest in acquisition. So I've suggested nice. that he or she, I'm not sure if it's a, a man or a woman, however, um, that he or she submit an application to the CPC. I met with their uh, legal counsel today to discuss that. For acquisition Good. for affordable housing. Yes. Now, shouldn't 
So who would be the applicant? Um, having learned, I think, a couple things from the open space submittal from my department in conservation, it was my advice for the applicant to submit the application with a, with a figure in mind, um, accompanied by an appraisal if possible, um, that he, they obtain themselves um, on the assumption that the town would also want to obtain their own. Right. Um, I'm just saying, should, should, should the Affordable Housing Trust put in the application? They would have to, they, they are meeting before the deadline. Um, I suppose a letter of interest should be submitted from the property owner to the trust. Um, I don't know, I mean, I don't know. When we did the 12 Cypress Circle acquisition, mm -hmm. the property owner was the applicant. Oh, okay. And is the Affordable Housing Trust gonna put in a, for like general affordable housing money? I have suggested that the trust is, needs to be reseeded I'm submitting a question to legal counsel about the potential uh, for an application that would uh, seek to fund the affordable housing trust with the affordable housing set aside year over year. It, it, you can't. Can't. So you that's can't. don't even waste his time. Okay. Uh, Everybody and and the coalition has said no. Okay. So in that case, multiple then multiple town councils have said no from multiple. So in that case, then yes, the trust. I've suggested that the trust should submit an application to reseed themselves because they are out of cash. Can you just make out the application and send it to them? I can, that's what I'm doing. Um, but the first time we did this- <laughs> Don't make um, me fill in the blanks for them. I was asked to produce an application to f uh, fund the trust by my boss. When I went to present the application to the CPC, the chair at the time was Andrew Gottlieb who was on the trust, because he was a select board member, said, I, this is great, but I don't know when we voted on this, and I don't want to get in that situation again. The trust had never authorized the submission of the application. So the trust is going to meet before the 17th to submit the application that I prepare for them. All right. Just leave that line of the money blank, and they can just. Sounds good. Oh, that's interesting. All right. Uh, design review. No meeting. Plan review. No, no uh, meeting. Environmental Oversight Committee. No meeting. Historical District Commission. No meeting. <clears throat> Harbor Management Plan. I guess I haven't heard yet. I have an update. <laughs> yes, I heard something. What, I heard what he, yeah, there was something at the Board of Selectmen. Something at the Board of Selectmen. I thought it was a Selectman appointee. It, it was, Michaela. Yeah. So. Um, I was made aware that the, the initial proposal for the makeup of this Harbor Management Plan Committee was submitted to the select board and they had questions regarding it to which triggered a review of the committee that established the first Harbor Management Plan back in the late 80s. Um, so the recommendation was to compose a body consistent or similar to uh, that entity, which was primarily composed of department heads and experts in the field. Um, so there's no planning board representative on the committee anymore. It is the town planner on the committee. Oh. I did not. I did not ask for this. That's okay. That's okay. But I have been, I have been appointed to that position by the select board. So we can take it off our agenda. Well, I'd still like to report to you on it, if possible. Well, put it under yours. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. You won't feel bad seeing it on the agenda. Oh, <laughs> I'm pumped out. All right. Um, are there any, is there any public comment? Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I, you know, if you, if you guys want to speak, you like you during the agenda the items, I please. I can tell when Lynn's in the building, I can hear from 100 feet away. Hey. <clears throat> Lynn Barbie, Surf Drive. Uh, two things. One was, I have a question about the open little boxes on the survey, because I did it half an hour, where you people can just fill them in. Okay. I always look at those things and think, what, how is this information going to be incorporated? I know all the rest of it can be tallied. So people decide to write a little essay in those boxes. How is that going to be dealt with? Um, I, I'll pose the question, I think, specifically to Weston and Sampson, but I think we would want to just, you know, take that type of qualitative information and, and s summarize it in some, in some fashion that uh, okay. we can ascertain a general sentiment. May, may I? It generally gets put in 
the, the end of the survey as verbatims. And they just tell you which question it is and put, right. the, put the response in. I mean, because there were, there were moments where I thought, well, I put something in and I was like, well, I really answered these questions above it. Anyway, um, the other question was at last night's housing committee meeting that indicated that you had gone to a meeting with the tribe with mm -hmm. uh, Alan and Stephanie. And I just wondered, because I, th I gather there weren't any minutes from that, sort of how that all happened and what came out of it, because it, it wasn't clear to me from last night's meeting. Yeah. Um, if I may. Alan Isbitt's invited me to participate in this, um, which I was happy to do. Um, we've been trying to you know, facilitate a uh, more functional relationship with the Tribal Housing Department for some time. Um, and it's slow progress, but I'd say this meeting was the really the, the first time we were able to sit down and just kind of lay things on the table, if you will. Um, and we did, we did that. All, there were a couple things that I think we, we wanted to um, approach them with, but more be, from my perspective, you know, it's, I wanted to be um, a listener. I feel like I learned a fair amount doing the comprehensive plan process. Um, Who from the tribe was there? Well, the entire uh, tribal commission, or housing tr commission. I don't know all of them okay. um, by name, but um, Chucky Green, uh, Cassie Jackson, um, uh, Shelly Toby, um, Carlton Hendricks, and, and others um, that I don't recall. Mm -hmm. um, but there were s certainly some impassioned concerns that the tribe had um, with the housing authority. And that's what Stephanie was talking about last night. They were, um, mm -hmm. they were very prepared to let us know how upset they were with the housing authority on the, on the belief that we were the housing authority. Um, so we were able to at least clarify those issues and offer some guidance on who they need to speak to to, to right. deal with those concerns at the Housing Authority. Um, and also just made an attempt to understand that the issues that we're trying to navigate between the town and the tribe are long, deep-seated, complex, and nuanced at the same time. Um, and approach the conversation from a less technical point of view and more of a, a human point of view and just listen to each other, understanding that um, I think we all like to intellectualize that or, uh, or we intellectually understand where people are coming from, but there's a significant amount we, we, we don't understand, I think, cross-culturally, um, living so closely. It's really interesting. Mm. Um, so I, we really just approached that meeting intent on, on showing, showing good faith and being listeners and, and wanting to demonstrate that um, we are serious and we want to stick around. You know, we don't want to make a, a phony offer of, 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 of collaboration and walk away when it gets hard. So when it's hard, we want to just keep being present. Um, and this conversation wasn't an easy start. Mm -hmm. um, but we got to a place of productivity and ultimately what the tribe is very concerned with um, from the housing perspective is that they, Carlton was very clear on this, is that if they, if they the tribe, are gonna be participants in a process, they have a very clear, they have very stern expectation. They, they want a tangible outcome for them. If they're gonna participate, how many units can that produce for them? They have unhoused tribal members and they want to house those tribal members. Um, and one thing that I feel like I was able to effectively communicate was the, the scope of, of our, our ability to just produce units and to clarify a bit about timelines, about taking a concept of a project and bring an actual unit okay. online. It's, it's a lot of work. Um, but ultimately, we narrowed it down to a discussion on tribal preference. Right. Um, where I was able to kind of elaborate on this with, with Carlton and said, um, you know, I, I don't have 10 units. The planning department doesn't have 10 units in their back pocket or the town or any other entity to house a tribal member today. Right. Um, 
there's a housing crisis and you're competing with a bunch of other people and there's some injustice in that. We recognize that and we all want to talk about that a little bit, but through, through the housing production plan, I think there was an opportunity to um, elevate issues for the, as they pertain to housing for the tribe like we haven't done in any official capacity before um, and, f and ascertain the, the, a, the, an appropriate role and process for them, for us, for this to be a truly collaborative process and to recognize um, the housing issues that affect the tribe uniquely um, than anyone else. So we walked away saying, all right, we have a lot to learn about each other, um, but we're gonna come back and do it again and, we're, and the town and the tribe will participate in the housing production planning process together with the ultimate goal of being able to define at the end of this plan you know, if we develop a pipeline of town projects, right, say it's five, what's the set aside for the tribal members for each of those projects? Because that's what Carlton really wanted to see. What are we going to get? Yeah. And I think we can deliver that through a process like that. Um, an expectation, a clear expectation of impact. So that's what we're working towards. And that's where we ended it. Okay. No, I... I I was very pleased to hear that there was that kind of ongoing conversation, but I didn't really get a clear perspective from last night's housing committee meeting, sort of how it all went. Yeah. And, and you know, I mean, does anybody have any minutes? Because I'd really like to hear how it went. And I figured, well, you know I'll come here tonight and ask you. I can guarantee you um, Cassie has minutes of that meeting if she's willing to, to share those minutes. I don't know if they're publicly available or not, but I will ask and see if we can provide those for you. Oh, well. I mean, I don't have to have them. It just, I, I think, no, I think it, the, um, you know, we've been trying and trying with the LCP to be able to have the, the, the meeting, which I'm very glad it's going to happen. Um, but there's, you know, so many different avenues and layers in our relationships that I think that, you know, housing is something that can be hopefully pursued in a very constructive way. So yeah, I agree. Thank you for going. Thanks, Lynn. My pleasure. And thanks for your report. No problem. It'll probably be the first housing production plan uh, in a town with a rec federally recognized Native American tribe that will be a huge part of that plan. It's going to be great. It's going to be good. It's going to be great. Thank you. All right. I have nothing else. Anybody else? Any public comment? If not, I'll take a mo I'll accept a motion to adjourn. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody abstaining or opposed? Okay. Thank you, everyone.